Hello, everybody. You guys don't need this. It's 6 o'clock, so why don't we go ahead and get started. Um, first of all, thank you very much for uh, joining us tonight. We appreciate you all being here. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Greg Frosley. I'm Department Director for Community Services. Uh, community Services includes planning and zoning. Uh, Stuart Schmeling, who's in the back of the room here, he is our senior planner and runs planning and zoning for us. And he's going to be the lead staff person on this, this project. Uh, we have another staffer in the audience, and that's Diane Libby. She is our administrative support, and she's going to keep Stu and I in, in line and keep all this information organized for us. Um, what we're doing here tonight, it's a kickoff meeting for what uh, is a rather large project. It could span at least 12 months, and that is a uh, state-mandated general plan update, as well as uh, we decided to tackle uh, reviewing and revising our development code at the same time. Uh, each of those projects by themselves is, is quite large, but we decided to do them uh, together. I don't want to disappoint anybody, but this meeting tonight is not going to be focused on code enforcement. <laughs> um, this, the, both these projects does have a, a code enforcement element, and uh, Don Elliott, who I'll introduce in a second, will get into the details about that a little more. Uh, but it, uh, the city never advertised this as a code enforcement meeting. I'm sorry if you, if you were uh, misled by someone. The, the development code um, contains a enforcement section on it, which will be revised as we get into the project. Tonight is simply a kickoff meeting. Um, to assist us with, the, with, with both of these projects, the city contracted with a nationally recognized firm uh, called Clarion & Associates. They're here with us tonight. They've been here all day uh, meeting with various stakeholders with the city and the, the users of the code and the users of the general plan. Uh, so they've had a very active day with, uh, with the movers and shakers of the community. Don Elliott is the, uh, the lead for, for the consulting team. I'll introduce him here. He can introduce your team and kind of give an overview of what uh, we're trying to accomplish here tonight. No, what... The, I think they're they're misquoting me from a uh, from a work session presentation that I gave on the 11th, where I said the first. Well, we've got two hours, sir. We're we're happy to talk about code enforcement. That's just not going to be the focus of tonight. That that's what I said earlier in in my introduction. We're going to cover a variety of topics, one of which is going to be code enforcement. I just want to let everybody know that the focus of tonight's meeting is not going to be on code enforcement. It can be discussed heavily, but there's many topics that we need to discuss tonight. So, so uh, for the rest of you, I'll introduce Don Elliott here with Clarion and Associates, and he can give an overview. They've got a short presentation, and then we can, uh, the rest of the two hours can be spent with uh, question and answers. Thank you, Don. Thank you, appreciate it. Let me, uh, uh, just introduce the team and uh, talk a little bit about the project tonight. We have a short presentation, and I mean short meaning probably 20 minutes. Uh, we want to explain what the project is about, who we are, how the project will unfold. I want to talk about who will be doing the work, and then we will open it up for questions and answers, and I will be happy to take questions and answers about code enforcement, because as, as Greg said, it is a part of what we're doing. If that's what you came to ask questions about, we'll do our best to answer them uh, tonight. So uh, I want to introduce, first of all, myself, Don Elliott. I'm a planner lawyer. Uh, we work, we're based in Denver, all of us. Uh, and this is what we do for a living. Darcy White is with me. She's a planner and landscape architect. And Darcy will be leading the part of this project dealing with the general plan update, the state mandated update of the general plan. I'll be leading the part that it heads up the development code changes. And Kristen Sazowski is with us also. She's a planner and lawyer and an engineer who works with our firm, and she'll be assisting us on both of those projects. So 
Uh, without further ado, let's uh, give you as much information fairly quickly as we can about what this is and is not, and then get on to your questions and answers, because the real purpose of tonight is to see what you want to tell us about what you would like changed and not changed as we go through this process. So here we are, we're just doing some introductions. We'll give you, uh, I'm going to give you background on us, and then we'll talk a little bit about the general plan update, a little bit about the development code update, and then what to expect next. So who are we? Well, Claran Associates is a land use consulting firm out of Denver. Uh, this map shows you where we have done similar work throughout the United States. Um, we've been around for about 22 years. We have an office in North Carolina also. It's a group of planners and attorneys and designers. And again, we've, we've done the t this type of work, coming into a community and saying, how has how your vision changed and how should we change the development code, the rules by which property is developed and redeveloped. How does that need to change to, to implement your vision? We've done that in about 130 communities across the United States. And we are recognized in one of a series, of, a bunch of national awards for different work that we've done. So here's the team. I've just pointed out, it's me. I'll be heading the development code. Kristen will be helping me on that project. Uh, Darcy is here. And then Shelby Summer is also in Colorado, and she will be helping out on the general plan update. So that's that you got three out of the four of us here tonight, and that's who will be doing the work. Here's our general philosophy, and that is that plans mean something. When you do a general plan and you cast a wide net and you tell people, look, it's been 10 years since you did the plan. What has changed? What are the new opportunities? What has gone in a different direction than you thought? And you need to rethink the future. It's important to do the plan right, and then it's important for the development code to reflect that plan. There are really only three ways you can implement a plan for a community. One is to educate people and, and, and have them change behavior if you want to, to, to behave in different ways. That's hard to do. That's just a matter of education. The second way is spend money. Spend money to build streets, spend money to build sidewalks, spend money to build parks. And the third way is to change the rules by which property is developed and redevelopment. There are only three ways. But basically, your development code, how the rules and incentives are, getting them cleaned up and simplified in order to get them aimed towards your goals, that's one of the most powerful things you can do. So that's what we do. They ought to be plan-based. We want to put in front of you, the citizens and the stakeholders in Lake Havasu City, what are the options? When we recommend that you go this way, what were the other options that we didn't recommend? Why didn't we recommend them? So your choices, and when you review this, are informed choices. We, we wanted, we really pushed to have you here tonight for a kickoff because we want you involved throughout the process. But we know from experience, if we have you show up every month for a 12 or 18 month process, you will get bored and tired and get tired of listening to us. So we try to focus it at different places where we have a draft chapter or we have a draft summary or a report that we can explain and get feedback. Did we get it right? Did we get it wrong? So other than tonight, we don't have a lot of meetings where we say broadly, what do you want to do? What do you want us to change? What do you not want to change? We cast that wide net early on, we listen to you, and as we go down the road, we ask more focused questions. Okay, here's what we heard, here's the direction we're putting in front of you, did we get it right or not? But we're asking you to react to that, so focusing the public involvement is important. These kind of projects, by their own nature, to be honest, planning is kind of cool and visionary. What I do for development codes, is often, people think, boring. You're just talking about the law and the rules done. If we don't build momentum and people keep the project moving, keep it on track so that people see, yep, yep, they're doing their job, they're staying on budget, they're staying on schedule, this will finish on time, we're in trouble. So we keep that momentum going. We keep to the schedules that we put out there, we keep moving. Streamlining administration. Your development code is significantly more complicated than it has to be to protect the quality of life in Lake Havasu City. Um, and no one likes government that spends more time or money doing its job than it needs to. So a fair amount of what our firm does is try to streamline the administration so that government can make more consistent decisions faster uh, and more efficiently. That's just a personal interest of mine. Uh, it's all our clients ask us to do that. Usually we try to say, okay, what can we do faster, cleaner, more efficiently than what's there? And then finally, 
Right now, if uh, any of you have tried to read or have read the development code, you'll know it is not very user-friendly. It's uh, got a lot of pictures or graphics or explanations of what you're trying to achieve. It's a lot of text. Well, it's a, it's a document that has text, but every new code that's written is, I, I'm confident, much more user-friendly and easier for citizens to understand than the last generation. So this will look a lot different when you're done, even when we carry over provisions that are still here and no one said they should change, they're going to look and feel and be more understandable. So those are basically the, the values we bring here. We do a lot, and these are just examples of some of the graphics that are used in order to explain plan and code concepts. With that, I'm going to, we've got two more pieces here. I'm going to let Darcy talk a little bit about what are the steps we're going to follow to update the general plan, and then I'll talk about what are the steps in the development code. So, Darcy White. Good evening, everyone. Um, I just have a few slides here to talk about. As Don mentioned, um, the general plan update is really important. This really sets the foundation for the code update. Um, there's a couple things you may or may not know. The last major update to the general plan was done in 2002. Some of you may have participated in that process then. Um, and it is about a 10-year cycle. So this is um, overdue in terms of, of looking at, there are a lot of technical updates that must be made to the plan. We're going to be looking at population projections, um, employment projections, a lot of those things that serve as the foundation for how um, and where the city will be able to grow in the future. Um, this is something that's required by state law. One of the things that's changed since the plan was updated in 2002 is that you've grown significantly. The, the, the city has uh, reached a new threshold within the state guidelines in terms of population. So once you reach that 50,000 population threshold, there are new requirements to include uh, in the general plan. So those are things that we'll be addressing as part of this process. Um, and you can see on the left-hand side, there are some basic features within the plan that are addressed today, land use, growth management, um, transportation, open space, cost of development, but there are some other aspects that we'll need to take a closer look at. Housing, uh, bike, safety, energy, all of those factors that are addressed in, in, a, in a more cursory rate way in the plan today, but that we'll be taking a closer look at. So as Don said, we'll be bringing back more detailed information for you as we get into the process and asking you some questions about different topics that relate to the general plan. In terms of our overall work program, as Stu mentioned, this is, this is going to take a little bit over a year for us to get through this process, but we'll have uh, three steps in the process where we're bringing information to you about the general plan. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do based on the information we've been gathering from this initial trip is to do, a, do an assessment of the plan that you have in place today. We're going to take a look at um, what we've heard from the community in terms of, of what's missing, what needs to be addressed. Um, look at some of those new requirements and provide some recommendations about what we think needs to be looked at, what needs to be changed as part of this process. So we'll bring that back to you, uh, check in, get some feedback, and then go back and produce a draft of the updated general plan. So there'll be a couple chances throughout there for public input as part of the process. Um, and ultimately, with both the plan and the code, we'll get into the adoption phase, but that's a little ways off yet in terms of, of timeline. Um, Public involvement is a huge part of this process, both for the general plan and the development code update. And there are a few things that we will be doing throughout the process to give you, uh, keep you up to date and give you opportunities to participate. Each time we're in town, um, we'll be having meetings like this, different formats. Sometimes we may have maps and uh, tables set up where you can get into some of the nitty gritty. Sometimes, as Don said, we'll be talking about some of the code pieces. But we will have uh, regular meetings for the community in that format. There's also a page set up on the city's website for this project and you can sign up for updates there. We also had a sign up sheet going around and if you get your name on that list we'll make sure you get uh, directly from us updates about future meetings and opportunities for input. Um, there will also be a couple of committees that will help guide the process and those have not been uh, formally established yet. That will be happening uh, probably over the next month or so uh, to guide both the plan uh, and the, uh, the uh, code update. So a variety of opportunities for input. We will be doing uh, through the website uh, online surveys, other things. So if you're not able to come directly to meetings, there will be other opportunities to participate. Um, with that, I think I'm going to turn it back over to Don to talk a little bit about uh, 
Uh, questions about the plan update? Sure, go ahead. Okay, you're on the committee. Uh-huh. Have you formalized how, how much how many people and who will be? We keep hearing about stakeholders. And I object to that personally because every person in Lake Madison exactly. City is as important as anybody else. The, the we keep movers and shakers and, and you know, what's going on. So how many movers and shakers and how many citizens? The question was, how will the committees be formulated? How many people, how will those be picked? And what we're looking for is a broad representation of the community. We absolutely agree with you. There are a lot of different perspectives in the community. Um, the committees have not been formulated yet. Um, we're looking for a representation of residents, business owners, economic folks, you, name, you know, public agencies. And those uh, representatives will all be uh, vetted through the process. And I, th I believe, uh, Greg, the council will be making the ultimate call on the actual selection of the committee. So um, the plan committee will be a little bit bigger um, than the code committee, primarily because there's a lot more people interested in the plan than there are in some of the development regulation issues. But the code uh, committee may have more uh, architects, builders, folks who are actually working with the code on a daily basis. But that's the general sense of, of what those committees will be. But as I said, um, it's important for us to hear from everyone in the community. And so in addition to the committee meetings, we will also be having meetings like this, the online opportunities, so that we get feedback from as many different folks as possible. The reason I ask that is because on the city's website, as far as this goes, uh -huh. they're saying the meetings, uh, they, they didn't say dates or anything, the meetings, you've got more movers and shakers, stakeholder meetings than you do public meetings. And I don't know if that should be turned around or not. We actually, we'll, we will have public meetings at each step in the process. What I'm saying is there's more stakeholder meetings in that process than there are... In terms of the committees, do you mean? I, I think there's a misunderstanding here. Yeah. Stakeholders doesn't mean movers and shakers. Well, Stake, we have the committees that, as Darcy's explained, the two committees are supposed to be a blend of citizens and people who run business or work with the code. So when you say there are more committee meetings than there are public meetings, that is correct. But the committee meetings are a blend of citizens and others who make their livings with these things. So, under, in that website mm -hmm. of the city, mm -hmm. it has with, under the meetings who are the stakeholders, mm -hmm. and there are no regular citizens in there. It's all business or business related. Okay. Now that is, we, we had that same problem with the last general. Plan. Okay. Okay. So you and would. The general plan came out, and you've seen it. Mm -hmm. It was a mess, mm -hmm. in my humble estimation. Just a thought there to work with. <laughs> Others have said it before you. I take your comment that you would like to make sure that there are as many citizens involved on the same level as right. stakeholders and people who make their living with or through the development of the city. I got it. Yes, ma'am. It is full-time residents. Greg, do you want to answer that? It is a, it's a number that the city has to establish. So here you go. Oh, you want to do it? Here. The, the population that we're using is actually from the 2010 census, which is full-time population. That was determined for us. So the, and what was the number that we put in there? The, uh, 52,527. Full-time population in two, 2010. All right. Let's. Yes, sir. I'll we'll take one more question, then we'll run through the development code and have more time. Yes, sir. Are you going to discuss any further the general plan advisory committee? Uh, we're. We're, we've described it, and if you are interested in being a part of it, we'll be happy to take suggestions just to be part of it. But no, we weren't planning on discussing it more tonight. I just wanted to address Chuck's comment a little bit. Um, and, and Don, it, it ties into your question as well, because the, when I said stakeholders, the stakeholders are really the people that use the code in their business. Those people we interact with in the city, and we, we tried, I think we did an email blast of 65 people or something like that. Those are the people we know. 
other than a couple of uh, people in this room, I don't know the rest of you, so it's difficult to schedule specific meetings with you, which is why we have these public meetings. You'll, it, there's a, there's a, a, a tab on our website where you can go in and, and provide your, your email uh, addresses so we can contact you directly, as Darcy mentioned. And we also have the sign-up sheet, which also gets you on that email list. So I, I didn't mean to minimize the, 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 the people in this room as not being stakeholders, because I agree with you, Chuck. Everybody's a stakeholder. We just don't know how to get a hold of 52,275 people. Tell us what they did. Yeah. And if I could address that, there was one press release that went out to my knowledge that I personally proofread, and it meant it had no mention of code enforcement. So, I, you know, I, I apologize for the for the uh, confusion, but um, you know, it, it wasn't intentional by any means. And and the we do have a public participation plan that will be going to council for review and adoption here in April. That will lay out exactly what the process is. In general, give dates for future public meetings for, for everybody to attend. It, it's a public participant. Yes. Thank you. It's not a meeting. It's a document that we were asked to prepare in order to explain when will the public meetings happen, when will the committee meetings happen, how will people be briefed, what media outlets are we going to use to try to keep people informed, and that we've been asked to prepare, we've prepared it, and it will be taken to City Council for their review and approval. So. Well, it hasn't. Well, if they'd been picked, we would have met with them today. We were trying to meet, but they haven't been picked. No, I'm serious. Well, who know? No one's told me, and I don't think they've been picked. In the presentation that was given, uh, there was a slide that suggested uh, different agencies, but there were no names on it. And that was just to get the council thinking in the direction that, you know, these agencies should be represented in a general plan update. What what was said, if I recall, and it is recorded. We can all go back and check my memory after this meeting. But it, I, I did uh, uh, provide a sense of urgency because our first public meeting was scheduled for April 1st, and we have to start formulating this list. At the time of that work session, we hadn't emailed any stakeholders uh, to schedule. The Clarion team met with, um, I don't know, 30 or 40 people today that were specifically scheduled in various time slots. No, no. Those, the committees have not been formed. Once we get a, we, we, the Clarion team interviewed the stakeholders. That's what we call them. I'm going to find a different word by the next meeting. Uh, and then um, citizens, uh, uh, and then all you folks and anybody else that signs up the website on the website are all eligible to be part of the committee. But they haven't been formed. And the council adopts that. The council uh, has final approval of the committees. I'd like to do this. I'd like to move forward. I can tell by the comments that have been made that several of you uh, uh, want to make comments and you have thoughts about how this ought to go and that uh, some of you are not happy about what's been done so far. But I want to get to that, but I want to go through the second part of this work so we can get into the questions and answers, do our best to answer them. And I do want to talk about it. The second part is the development code update. We'll go through it quickly. Just as with the general plan update, uh, there is a work plan. There is a series of steps that needs to be gone through to update the, 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 the development code. One is this, these meetings, including this meeting, every time we come back, we try to schedule this type of meeting and notify as many people as possible. We come up with an evaluation that says, okay, based on what we've heard, based on what we've read in your code, and, and it is a bit of a mess, um, uh, based on the codes we've written around the country and the practices we know that other cities use to get at these issues, here's what we recommend. This should be carried over. This should be changed. This is something new that we think you ought to do. And these are obsolete controls that we think you ought to just get rid of because nobody uses those anymore. There's, they're just crud in the system. Then we come out, whoops, I'm sorry, go back here. Um, 
Then we come back and do a staff draft. I'll talk about more of that to try to make sure we've got it correct. And we do a public draft, and then it has to go forward for adoption. And that will play out over the next year plus. So what are the major steps? I just want to go through this. We review all the documents, the plans and things that have, people have done. There was a RUDAT done, a study of the re re changes that could be made to particularly the highway and the downtown area of Lake Havasu City. We're considering that, lots of other documents. We have initial meetings, we tour the city, and we do this meeting. So that's project kickoff. Now, the door, I just sense that people are afraid they've missed the bus, that something's been decided that they didn't know about. The door is, I understand, listen, listen guys, it hasn't. I'm the project manager. I'm telling you that we will take any comments, not only tonight, we will take comments until we're done with the whole project. There has been, there is no date on which the door closes. The date it closes is when city council adopts this a, two, a year and a half from now. So there are always open for new meetings, additional meetings, phone conferences, additional meetings with groups when we come back here. So this is the beginning, this is the kickoff. We find that if we don't do a meeting like this very early in the process where we just say, look, it's starting, pay attention, be a part of it, be involved, then somewhere down the road somebody's going to say, well, you never even told us you were starting. So we have a meeting to start to let you know and let people know. You may contact through the city anytime. They pass their comments on to us and that's what, that's what we'll continue to do. So I don't want anybody leaving this meeting saying, you know, the original off happened and we weren't involved and now it's over. It ain't over. This is the first visit in this step, and where the door is always open. We do this outline, what needs to be changed, what, is gonna, what needs to change. What we do is put an assessment out that has extensive, detailed stuff. This chapter is fine, nobody complained about it, nobody, it's, it's working fine. This chapter is a mess, this is how it ought to be changed. I am, I do, the consultant, and then we bring it back and take it to the council and these committees to say, do you agree with our assessment as to how this ought to be changed? how it ought to be restructured to be user friendly and, and the judgments we've made. I will be very honest with you, usually the result of that, because we make our living doing this way, this around the country, usually the result is that people agree with 98% of it and say, you got 2% of it wrong. But if you tell me I got 20% or 50% of it wrong, then we change it. Well, if, I, if no complaints have been given to me, then no complaints have been given to me. No, that, they need to go. I mean, let's, that's a very good question, ma'am. The, the, any comments or suggestions as to what ought to not change or change need to go to Stu Schmeling, and I will put his email back there, and he will forward them on to us. That's our process. I see some smiles in the audience, guys. We can't, we can't have side conversations going on here. Our process is that the project manager on behalf of the city needs to know what the comments are. Uh, I tell him to forward me all the comments. It's not a screen, but there needs to be. Oh, yes, ma'am? No, no, I think you misunderstood this. Okay. I'm, no, I'm, that's a good question. It's a good question. I didn't mean to imply that at all. No, it's not your fault. The, the reason that usually when we come up with a diagnosis that says this is what we recommend, and it's a recommendation. This is a recommendation for change. This is what we recommend not change because everybody seems to love it. Usually, well, I'll get, get into that in the Q&As, is that we listen. Usually when we bring forward this assessment, people read it and say, my comment got included, or there's a footnote that says it didn't get included, and here's why that can't happen. Either it's un unadministrable. We get ideas all the time that people say, can't you do this? And the answer is, it's illegal under Arizona law. It's illegal under Colorado law. We can't do that. We tell you that. But the reason it's 98 is not that we're right or that we've predetermined this. The reason is we try to run these processes so that people ask questions, we respond, and then we try to incorporate that in what we send forward. So. To be very, I'm, I don't mean to sound arrogant, the reason people generally move forward is that when you take it to, you go through a public process and you ask for co public comment on it, the public 
comment is in support of what we've suggested. That's the reason it usually moves forward. But I want to be clear about the process. Let's get it clear. There's an assessment. We bring back the assessment that have a public meeting and do notices and, and get input on that. If there's disagreement with that, then that gets fixed before we go for, to council. I don't want to waste your money drafting something until the roadmap has been established. That's a road. Just a minute, ma'am. Then there is the staff draft, then there's a public draft. So there are three different parts, and as I'll explain in a minute, well, I'll explain it right now, and then I'll get to your question. I see a lot of people want to talk. We don't do it at one time. We kind of deal with the, the draft of the development code in, the process, in three different mm -hmm. chunks. In, in, in three different chunks, excuse me. Uh, it's very difficult for most people to read an entire development code and understand how it all interrelates at one point. And so we divide it into three parts. We'll first bring back, this is the way the kind of city does business. Administration, how do you get a permit? When do you need a public hearing? Who makes the decision? What are the criteria that they use to make that decision? How is it enforced? So those of you who are here because you want to talk about enforcement, that is the first of the three parts we will bring back because that has to do with not what can you do on your property or how big can it be or how much landscaping do you need? It has to do with how does the city run the business of development code and enforcement. So that'll be the very first thing we bring back. The second one is, in order to achieve the general plan update, there are changes in what needs to be what you in the, the zone districts that are in the city or what you can do in each zone district. And the third part is kind of development and design. Huh? Are there changes in landscaping? What about parking? What about anything else that has to do with not what you can do on your property, but how do you lay out the site? There are problems in parking, and we've viewed them over the last several years, several days. There's, that'll come up in module three. That's not what you can do, it's how you develop your site. So we develop, we do this in three parts because that way when we get asked questions and we have meetings like this, and there'll be a separate meeting on each one of these things, we'll come back and bring it separately, we can focus the discussion. Okay guys, tonight's discussion is about the processes that the city uses to review and approve your applications and the way it enforces it and the way it deals with the business of running development review. Okay, now two months later, tonight's discussion is on the menu of zone districts. Are some of them obsolete and we can get rid of them? Are some of them new? You don't have some of these things that many cities of 50,000 would have to encourage investment and development. So those are, that we get to focus the meeting on these and it's much more likely that people understand what you're talking about and can give feedback on that issue, not try to read and chew on a 400 page document or a 300 or a 200 page document at that time. I wish it was shorter, but it's usually a couple hundred pages and it's hard to chew on that and understand it. So we break it into parts. Then we revise these and we have public meetings on, and we bring the public draft back. After we have done this in three parts, which we do for understanding, then we put them together and say, here's the comments we got on all, here's the comments we got on all of them, let's put them together. All together, these three parts make one development code. And the footnotes, what we do to try to avoid charges that we're blowing anything by anybody is, every change is footnoted. Every change from the current code will be footnoted. I, I know this will sound annoying to you, but it is true, it is, there will be hundreds of footnotes. Not because we set up to change everything, but because usually it's to say, we got a comment on this and here's how we responded. We were able to include that. We got a comment on that and it changed. It's in response to the comments we get that we say, yes, we were able to do it. Yes, we were able to. No, we couldn't. And the usual reason is either it's a great idea, but it can't be implemented under Arizona law or it can't be implemented without hiring five new people at the city, which they can't hire, basically. So. They, we, we try to give the reasons why, but we footnote them so that, I, I have attorneys come and tell me, Don, I don't need to read the code, I just read your footnotes. If I read your footnotes, I can tell what has changed and what's not. I'm really worried about, did you catch my changes and put them in there? So that's how we, we after we in three parts, we put them together and put them in one document, and then there are adoption hearings. Now, your comments are about, why can't we all vote on it? That's really a city council decision. I will say that, you know, we follow state law. Under Arizona law, the comp plan, the general plan update, which Darcy discussed, does have to go to a vote. That is a vote under Arizona law to approve a general plan update. Under Arizona law, and in the law of almost every, every state in the union that I know, 
the city council adopts and revises development codes. And that's why we haven't suggested anything other than the normal process. If, if you'd like to suggest a vote on it, you, you can do that. But we were asked to do this per the process in Arizona law, which says you take it through the Planning and Zoning Commission. There's a public hearing. They comment on it. If changes are needed, they make the changes. Then it goes to city council. And they're the ones who adopt the, the laws of the city of Lake Havasu. Just a minute. I, you've had your. City Council adopts the zoning, the development code, and almost. It a vote. Yes, it's the vote of the members of city. They make police regulations. They make sewer regulations. They make land use regulations. They are your. They're the ones who make your rules. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if Okay, let's. I, I hear you. Let me respond. Let's uh, he see a few more hands. Let me, let's just, you guys want to talk about this, and we're done anyway. That was, that was the schedule we're going through. Um, the development code, if there were to be changes in what you can do on your property, you're at the right meeting because the development code would do that. No one has told me that part of our job, and no one said today as part of our job, Don, you got to stop them from parking their cars on their property or the front yard of their property. That, that has not been told to me as a change that anybody has been encouraging us to make. Not just me and the client, that's the people we talk to today. Well, I don't think you missed anything, uh, and thank you for the comment on the meeting. The, the work session, the presentation that I personally gave, uh, listed several complaints, uh, categories of complaints that, that we receive at City Hall more often than, than others. One of them was parking in the front yards. So that is uh, up for discussion during a code revision. If, if, if the majority of the complaints that the city gets is, is my next door neighbor has 10 vehicles on the front yard, that's today not a code violation. Should it be? Should it be? We don't know. That's what these meetings are all about. The, the, the development code is set up to give you that. There's, right. there's violations. I think if we're going to change those rules to make it the way that Debbie would love, the, the people should vote on it, not just the city council. Oh. Yeah. Because the, if, if you have more people that disagree with you, they should have their way than my way. I think what she's saying that, that not everyone's heard, one of the main problems that I have uh, uh, problem with is that you quoted, you, we have Well, the, 
the, the tie between the population in the general plan is, is the only reason we're talking about population. Um, when, we, when, you, when you go over 50,000 people, which we did in the 2010 census, state law um, kicks in for uh, the general plan to include different components, additional components that a city smaller than 50,000 would have. So regardless of the, the, of the population, we're still mandated to do a general plan update every 10 years. So that's on the schedule. We have to do that. The last, the last census tells us we have to do additional work. So we're going to do that as part of this update because we won't have another census. I don't think we've received the 2012 census numbers yet. Uh, but even if it shows us at 49.9, we still have to do a general plan update to meet state regulations. Well, you're right, and the we, we're we're attempting to provide everybody a voice, as we are for you folks here tonight. Um, if if there's other uh, media that we haven't thought of to advertise, that that's you know we're welcome to any other suggestions. Uh, That's true. We, 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 we've had two, two suggestions that we, I would love to And they're both good. That we could take it forward as your suggestion. And I, it's not for me to agree or not. It is up there. But we heard it. And you like mass mailings. You would like a br very broad notification system. That's your recommendation. I heard them. I got them both. Sure. I got them both. I would like, I see several hands. We've got to do this one at a time, and I'm going to take people whose hands have been up the longest before we go back around. So, ma'am, go ahead, and then over to you. Yeah, go ahead. Heard that? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, Chief McGee Crimson. I've been here, as you well know, many, 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 many years. And first of all, we do have codes. We don't have code enforcement, but we have codes. And those codes have been in, changed, God, how many times? 15, 16 times since the start of Lake Havasu City. There's nothing in it. I mean, first of all, first of all, we did vote in 2002 for the update. Yes. But if what I hear from on the internet and from the people here, cars, you can park your car on your front yard. You just can't have a disabled car on That's your front true. yard. You can put your boat on there. You can't have a disabled boat. Yeah, you're talking about what you did. Yeah, but yeah, well, yeah. yeah. But, but the point. <laughs> The code and the codes are basically meant and written to keep property values up in the city and maintain, Chuck, again, like you said, safety and, and uh, health. Let me interrupt quick to, to address your comment. Right. Nobody's voting to change anything until 12 to 15 months from now. 
what tonight is is the kickoff meeting. If you go back to the if you go back to the March 11th code enforcement presentation that I gave, that that set the stage really for I think your comments tonight. That listed five or four or five uh, general categories that we get complaints on. That doesn't mean that we're pushing to change anything. I was just updating the council. We're updating our development code. These are going to be hot topics because th they're the topics that get the most attention. Yes. Right. We got that comment. Uh, I'm going to your hand, and then I want to go yeah. through the timing of this a little bit. Yeah. Everybody gets a sewer water bill. Mm -hmm. Sure. Right. That's a great. Let me great explain idea. something about the confusion. I got it. Um, so we got the notice. We've got the vote comment. Uh, we've got quite a bit of applause for not regulating cars and parked on vehicle on lots. I heard that one. I heard it. Via, I said that. I heard. That's what I heard. Um, but let me let me explain just to clear things up. State requires an update. City decided to bundle together the general plan and development code update, uh, and they and they selected us. This was long before this issue of enforcement. They hired us and they negotiated the scope for these things not having anything to do with parked cars on lots. That has nothing to do with it. Then, while we're waiting for the contract to be approved, people start calling and the phone starts ringing. Well, when elected officials' phones start ringing, they start doing something about it. They ask Greg to come in and talk about enforcement. That is going to happen a lot through this process. Three months from now, somebody may have a big parking problem, and the mayor or the city council will say, we need a work session, Greg, on some parking issues. And the paper will report parking issues. We're going to cities consider changes to parking issues. Those are things that filter into our process, but we were not hired to do that. If, if the complaints are loud enough, and that's what people, we heard, you don't want changes to that. But whatever happens with the with the city officials and little issues that pop up all the way through. What if there's a what if there's a strong rainstorm and all of a sudden you had flooding and all of a sudden they say, Greg, come in and something's wrong with the way we do drainage. Well, city considers changes to the drainage regulations. That will come up and it'll be filtered into this process. But those are going to come up all the time. I, I sometimes describe what we do as working on the engine while the car is running down the road because we're supposed to be trying to figure out how to improve and make this clearer and more lined up with your goals for the city. But we know that things are going to come up all the way down the line and either they're just a puff of smoke and nothing happens or people say no 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 down no. the elected officials say this is a serious one we'd like you to recommend a change in which case we come to a public meeting we present it we heard you'd like a mass mailing on that but we notify it we put it in the footnotes I got to tell you guys when we get to the final of this thing um, we get some people every time I'll just tell you no matter what we do saying I knew nothing about it and all we can say is, well, there were 21 meetings and three mass mailings, and there was television coverage. I don't know what else we can do. But, but we generally do not have anybody come up and say, this draft code council, which you are asked to approve, includes changes that they have not told us about. We do not get that. We will divulge the changes all the way along. So if you object, you say that. We may, we, there are always people who fall asleep and stay asleep through the whole process. I can't other than defibrillators, I can't do anything about that. They're just people who sleep through things. But we do not get accused that this thing includes changes that we did not have a chance to comment on or were not notified to us. That's our goal. You never get complete agreement on anything. But you can get, you, the best we can do is to say, we ain't going to blow it by you. We're going to do it along the way, and you can complain if you want. And we will pass that on. And it's very common, very common, for down the road some cities to say to me, Don, we'd like you to change the landscaping requirements X this way. I'm just making this up as an example. And then three months later, we put that in a public meeting. The public says, we really don't like that. We don't either it's too strict or, wow, that ain't nearly strict enough. And so we change it down the way. So it's very common for one draft to say, we propose the following change. 
And then when we put the consolidated draft out where they all go in, it says, we proposed this change. And then in response to public comment, we've decided not to make it, or we've decided to make a different change here. So we try to track it so people can say, did they hear me? Did they hear me? Did my comment about the draft make it into the final draft? But I don't want to fool you. They don't all make it in. We try to comment and respond to them, but you can imagine. What, what if we get 50 comments? I'm making this up, guys. 50 comments saying, we need stricter landscaping standards. And we get 50 comments saying, we need weaker landscaping standards. We've got to either leave them unchanged or use our judgment as to how, as how we do it. So the fact that we divulge it and we listen to your responses, we try to respond, does not mean that every change gets in there. We can't, because they're going to be directly contradictory advice that we get through this. What we can say is, here is what we consider the best practice. Here are the cities that use that practice. Here's why we think it is the right way to go. And then if you disagree, you just say so, and we deal with counts. You've had your hand up. I understand the position you're in, and I wouldn't want it. But I love it. But I make my living this way. We, go ahead. You have one big box, and that's yep. it. Now he's over here, mm -hmm. and we're all calling him, stop it, stop it, stop it. We don't want to Well, we're taking notes right now. We and and it's being recorded. I just, I, yeah. Okay. Well, there are, two, there, are two, there are two, yes it does actually. There are two different ways to do this. We bring forward the outline. So if your comment is in the outline, a couple things can happen. You can, we could take it to council to look at the outline and they could say, well I could put it in their recommendation and council could say, we've looked at the outline down, it's generally pretty good, but we don't agree with the following comment. We don't waste committees. our money drafting that change because somebody asked you to make that change. Or you say you're leaving X alone. We, we thought we were clear. We want that changed. So A, there's a chance at council for people to say, we got, you got your direction wrong. You either included something we don't like or you don't include it. And then you do the same thing when the drafts come forward individually. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And that's a public meeting with public notice. I, and I heard loud and clear, you don't have to repeat it, guys. I, I get the idea of the vote. I, I got it. I got that's what your suggestion is. Yes, ma'am. Yep. What is our main purpose here of what we're trying to establish by assessing the zoning or the What is it going to do for our economy? What's the difference it's going to make? Why are we even in this situation? I think there are three reasons. Arizona law says you got to do it every 10 years, so you're trying to remain in compliance. They generally, and I've never seen a plan that doesn't say, we want to grow our economy. We would like to have smaller vacancy rates. What are the engi economic engines? You got the AS... You're saying that they want smaller vacancy rates? Yeah, most people want the vacant storefronts and the vacant houses occupied. Maybe you don't. They want, they want, uh, I've never seen a plan that didn't say, we would like to have better jobs in our community. We would like to have more of the vacant buildings be occupied. We'd like to have more efficient use of our infrastructure. So those things, so the, the short answer is, uh, the, you do the plan to comply with Arizona law, and because you hope to set some priorities, if these are the goals of the community, then these are the steps we're going to try to take to do it. And so, I mean, that's it. And then where I come in, that's what Darcy does, what I come in is to say, okay, your goals now say whatever it is. The last goal really said, the last vision statement said, we want to make this a preeminent, a class A resort destination city. Maybe that's still the vision, but that's what we're going to find out in the, last, in, the last, in the next year or so. I come in and say, well, wow, if those are your goals, and there's not one, there's, there's lots of goals out there, then why do you have this development code? Because this development code is making it harder to redevelop this kind of property. You are keeping this kind of housing out that people would like to see. Every city in America is dealing with an aging population and the fact that as people age, everybody wants to stay in their house as long as they can. But often, at a certain age, which I'm r rapidly approaching, 
they end up some selling their house and moving into something else. Does your development code allow that housing in the places where it ought to be in order for people to stay in Lake Havasu City and move to a different kind of housing that needs less maintenance? Right. So that, that the reason is to kind of focus on what changes you want in the, in the city and then to make sure, well, and this happens all the time, guys. Cities have goals and they've adopted the goals and I look at the zoning code and I say, but then why are you doing that? Because that's going to prevent the kind of investment you want or you are encouraging the very kind of investment that you don't want, frankly. So that, that's why we're doing the exercise. I think I saw another hand. Did you have your hand up again? Yeah, yeah. And now we've thrown in the, the uh, code, the ordinance code, if you will. Yeah. I think we need to get ahead of what well, we're ahead of ourselves. I think basically we need to get the update first. The general plan update first, right. okay. And then we'll concentrate on our card or whatever mm -hmm. because that regulated by the update. Well, let me back up. Right? Well, let me, let me explain that. I, I realize this is hard to read, but I wanted to go through this because we, we put this slide up for this. This is the initial scoping, the first line. Then there, there are the evaluation. There's code enforcement. They've still asked. Guys, no decisions have been made. Pursuant to the discussion we had earlier, people have said, you know, Don, give us ideas about how their other cities enforce their codes. And that wasn't about parked cars. That was in general, enforcing of codes. How do you, how do other cities do it? I will tell you this. We just had a bunch of meetings to agreed that there is a problem of zoning code enforcement in this city. So I'm seeing nodding out there. So they have said, Don, well, that discussion is going along, not because it's, ripe, but it's ripe because the phones are ringing at city council. That's why it's ripe. And so they want some thoughts. Then the third thing, we evaluate the code. This fourth line here is the general plan update, sir. And we've phased it so that it's always considering issues before we start to draft the development code that implements them. And as I said earlier, the very first, this, this line here is the development code process. It lags. And frankly, as I said earlier, what I'm going to bring to you first is the kind of how the city does business, which ought to, it's, it's the right thing to do for two reasons. One, many of you are concerned about code enforcement, and we want to bring that forward first. Uh, we wrote the, it's funny, it's ironic, we wrote the development codes for Philadelphia a few years ago, and they said the same thing you said. They said the problem in this town is that the way they do business and the enforcement. So we said, well, let's put that issue on the table first. Let's bring it out there first. We can deal with that issue without having the general plan update because the general plan is the vision of where you want to grow and we're going to start out with how they do business and that can be trans more, more transparent. So they're going to have a, a four to five month lead on talking through the issues of vision and how you want to grow before we start drafting the code processes yeah, for that. Our, our last general plan was, and the one before that was all citizen oriented. I understand. I understand. So you can, you're at a, he's at a measure where he can integrate. That's how we, that, that's, well, development code and general plan. That's how we have phased it. Yes, it's two separate projects, but we're trying to, because they both require so much public participation, we're trying to integrate them to, as best we can. See, that's, that's what I was saying. It's a point of confusion. Yeah, right. And, I mean, the old timers know what went. Yeah, right. You have people in, and they're unaware. Uh -huh. There's nothing in the newspaper yeah. about it or anything like that, so they're unaware. And now that's where all these different uh, things start happening and comments start getting made. Let's do this. I, I've heard the desire for significantly more public uh, notice. I've heard the desire for a vote. I've heard a pretty strong desire that this group in particular does not want parking of cars on lots uh, uh, in in changed right now. I've heard other people say code enforcement is the problem that we ought to be bringing forward first. I've seen nodding or smiling. Or, 
are there other issues? Uh, we can keep going on this. I, I've heard those. We've got that. Are there other issues we haven't raised so far? Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right, and I I do I, I do hear you there, and and it, the truth is, even though the longer we stay here, the more we get an understanding of what a unique place this is. In those two respects, you're not unique. Uh, other, we work with cities all the time that say the number one phone call is trash and debris, you can call it whatever it is, but my neighbor is not taking care of the property. And on the other hand, who are you to tell me what to do on my property? Well, there is no way to split that baby. What you can do is study how other cities balance those two interests. At what point do your rights to do whatever you want to do on your property interfere with your neighbor's rights to sell their house because they can't sell it because of what you've done? And this is not a philosoph... The reason, let me just do a little bit more, the reason we do it the way we do is that instead of having a philosophical argument about property rights versus freedom versus nuisance versus rubbish, we could have a long conversation, and I've got a sense of this crowd. I would rather put in front of you language saying, here's our recommendation for how you balance those two interests. So you can comment back, no, no, that's too strict. No, that's too, because we will never, there is no answer to the personal freedom versus neighbor's behavior of their property. There is no conceptual answer to that. Everybody has to strike balance. Our experience is these will be much more productive meetings if it can be a discussion about some text that's up there. Here's what the law says, here's what the regulations say now, here are the proposed changes. Now you can comment, I think that's wrong, I think that's right. Oh, what do you know, Don? I think that's a pretty good balance. You tell us that five other cities our size in the West, western U.S. have struck that balance and it works for them? Mm, now I'm, all right, maybe that's something we ought to try. But we get much better feedback when we can bring you, that's why it's not a black box. I, I make my living by studying big, big. Uh, big box. Well, I'm not a big anything, but they, <laughs> when you put, uh, that's why we do what we do is to say, look, these are things that come in many communities. All we can say is there are two or three ways people come up with a compromise. Here's what we recommend. And we find it, it is much more productive to have you comment on that compromise than to have a generalized discussion about about these ideas. So. We do, and what we heard today from a number of people on, on the, just the code enforcement issue was, I don't know how many people in the, in the room know, they're in the process of trying to fill that position. They used to have more than one in that position, now they don't have. So the, the comment we got this morning was, or this afternoon was pretty similar. We know that the city knows it ought to be doing this. The problem right now is staffing, and they're trying to get around that, that staffing issue by hiring somebody to replace somebody that's not there anymore. So at least that's what we heard today. I hear two more hands, and then we'll see who. Listen, hey, Pat, that's the truth. Um, and I, I spoke to that point on March 11th because w w the facts are we don't have a code enforcement officer right now. The approved position that we have was recently vacated about five weeks ago. So prior to that, I think we were keeping up pretty well with our code enforcement. I don't remember the names. We, we have a schedule. It, it could be public information. There another meeting today? Yeah, you said you had another there meeting. There were several meetings we had, today. We had five meetings today, and we drove around the city yesterday. Guys, And listen. those five meetings included, what, four to six people, each. people from various agencies in the, within the community. Guys, it, it was, there's a whole lot less going on here than you're fearing, okay? There's a, there's, we... We asked, we asked, the city did not can this meeting for us. We do this for a living. We go in and we spend a lot of time driving around and having people tell us what they like or what they don't like, what the problems are, whether engineering problems or planning problems or nuisance problems or rubbish problems or why can't we get more of this kind of development. So we drive around. We talk to people 
who use the code. That's how we start, and we always start with this. Let's get the public involved. This is an 18-month process. The first public meeting is happening eight hours after the other meetings in the day. So we are trying to cast a broad net. There is no cooking of a result going on here. We, ha we can't interview everybody at once, so we, we ask them. Give us citizens. Get a public meeting at night. Give us realtors. Give us surveyors. Give us builders. Give us the school district. Give us the parks district. Give it people whose job it is to think about what they need in the future to make it a better community. That's all that's gone on. A series of meetings to ask people who know about the code and the plan what has to change, and then a public meeting to start the process of asking you the same questions. That's all that's going on. So, yes, sir. We did not go out at night. We went during the afternoon. Do you recommend that we also drive around at night? Yeah. But, what, but tell me, tell me I, I'm happy to. I, I'm a planner. I love driving around cities and seeing things. What will I see at night that I don't in the day? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We, uh, we, were, we were out at nine on the island last night, but we, you're right, we caught the beginning of it. We, we did see people walking down the streets without sight. You, you're exactly right. I guess we, we saw the early leavers from the parties and stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, so absolutely, we'll do it. Uh, we will drive around and try to see that, particularly on the island in the, in the central part of the city is what you're coming. Just a second. But as your comment, it sounds like your, sub, your, your main comment is, Don, keep looking because you'll see more the longer you look. But I think you're also commenting on sidewalks. Uh, is that right or no? That is part of it because there is a safety issue. Okay. Okay. Some other issues. Okay. 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 Public health and safety, you're saying that. I, no, I, I hear you. I hear you. Well, you're, you're in good company. Most people agree that zoning should be allow, uh, about that. And then beyond that, it's literally a matter of, of public debate with elected officials. I think I saw property tax. Property, property tax. Yes, ma'am. Okay, what are the stipulations for small business? I was talking about when you have large magnetic signs and different things like that, or what's the process for getting that approved? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, not, yeah, I'm not sure uh, what you're referring to with magnetic signs and whatnot. The sign code? Well, the entire development code is on the table for discussion. We don't have any idea as what these changes might be until we finish this meeting and have several more to, to find out what the concerns are. But if are you would like to not have something change, I mean, don't, don't let these thoughts pass. If you have heard something that you're worried about, and several, several of you are worried about cars, send a note to Stu saying, I do not want this change. Uh, that, 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 that comment makes it to us. Yeah. And then the other thing is, um, how are you going to make this more family-oriented here? Hmm. As far as maybe putting in a miniature golf course or like a water park or something, you say you want to make it resort style, well, you need to make it work more family-oriented where we have families and make it not such a party town. Okay. 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 With and, and with the ones you mentioned are kind of activities that they could do. Okay. Okay. Got it. We're, we're taking the notes there. I mean, we don't have the answer. Very. I'm taking that as a comment that you endorse making it more family friendly by investing more in facilities that would yeah. make it safer and more fun for youth to be here. I understand. We've heard that. You're not the first to say that. There are others who are who have said that also. We hope ASU grows, but but we've got a bit of an uphill battle because some of the students. There's not enough for them to do, right. and so 
we Mm-hmm. On Friday nights, I have sleepovers with all the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm keeping them all. They're all going to college. They're all doing really well. So, you know, they don't do drugs. They don't do alcohol. They don't sex. So I, we just need more nurturing, healthy things for our kids to be involved. That's a, that's a great comment. I'll come to you next. You had your hand up, Jesse. Okay, my last question. You can have another one after this. That's fine. As many as you want. Okay. You mentioned the law. Yeah. Very aware. You got are you aware that you are significantly supposed to regulate health and safety, mm-hmm. not somebody's leaves blown on your lawn? That is not making you unhealthy or unsafe. I understand. And it's going out of proportion. We went through all this in 2008, speaking of newspaper articles. Which one is it? I don't know what this one's about. No, I see you. I see you have a lot, but... Okay, parking code. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And everyone has a different opinion. We have, we have on uh, dogs, coyotes, uh, spring breakers, snowbirds, dogs or no dogs, coyote managers, the city is local. So you're never going to get everyone to agree on that. Right, right. And I just, back to the vote, you can't let six or seven people after all the committees sit down and say, well, this is what we're going to do. Whether you're okay, or not. I, get, I got the comment. I got to go. No, I, I, you had your hand up next, then I'll come over to you. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I, I believe this gal does. You know, I, I'd like to have everything pristine, and I keep my yard pretty well that way. You know, and I represent a group that, you know, we're about government reformation. Uh huh. You know, it's got to start at the city level. Okay. Well, those are kind of things that we would bring. We would usually bring forward. I've been, a, I've had this discussion in a number of towns about vacant cars on property or parking in the front yard. They're different issues. They're different. I don't want to confuse all these things together. But they, it's not the only city where this has come up. It just comes up all the time. I think what our, what we can do is bring to you. Look, people feel this way in many cities. Here's what they do about it, or don't do it. And I'll, I'll tell you candidly, many cities float this balloon, as Greg has said. They know that people are genuinely upset about it. They decide not to do anything about it for the reasons you've said. There are lots that cannot accommodate a vehicle anywhere except where it is now. There are terrain. There are lots that, that have grades on them that would, all right, the lot's big enough, but you can't get, a, can't, can't get it there. And so these are things, I mean, that's, to be honest, that's why you have a consultant involved to say, look, there are other places that have looked at this. This is what they often do. Here are your options. And I'm just, I'm tipping my hand. I'm not... I want to be clear, this is a process. We are going to go through it and hear it. You've all made some comments about why this would be a hardship on you. There are comments I've heard, I've heard before, and, and many cities decide not to go after the vehicles on lots issue because of that issue. So, yes, sir. You had to go after that. Why haven't you Well, I, I totally agree. The question was, if you're not going to enforce it, don't have it in the code. That's part of what we do in this process. I, I couldn't agree with you more. The way, the way you get respect for local government is you only put the stuff in the code that you are actually willing to and able to enforce. 
And in the process of doing this, it is quite often the, tr the case that, that an idea will come up. They'll send it up and it'll become, it'll, it might even get into a draft and then we thought about it or we, or we look at it. And the answer is, it sounds wonderful. Can't be enforced. Can't, either because of money or because it would involve, I'll give you an example. And this is a, don't quote me, this is just, I'm making up this example. Some cities say, we actually don't mind if you could put a mobile home on the back of your lot for your sick mother-in-law, but only your sick mother-in-law. Only your sick mother-in-law. Well, how are you going to tell whether the sick mother-in-law is there or not? You're going to have to knock on people's doors and say, are you really the mother-in-law? Where's your ID? I'd like to see some proof that you're the mother. I think you're faking it. You're just the neighbor who's pretending to be the mother-in-law, and they're renting it to you. And cities say, we ain't going to enforce that. We are, we are not going to send people out there to figure out who is this blue-haired lady. In the, in the, we're, we're not going to do that. So in the process of doing this, ideas are going to come up, and part of our job is to say, it's a fine idea, it just can't be done within political reality, or it just can't be done. So I couldn't agree with you more. If we find things that are, the city is unwilling or unable to enforce, those things ought to come out of the code completely. I agree with you. So you, just a second, he had his hand up, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I guess I don't think they've been singled out or uh, excluded uh, specifically. I, I Going off of memory, I don't know, honestly, if, if they were included in this first round or not. Do you have a suggestion as to extra things that should be done for that? Okay, sure. we, sir, you were, your comment was then you get into the politics of faith-based or, or the, yeah, we have to be careful. I think let's take it as a general comment that as with several of you, you'd like very broad outreach. One way is to contact church leaders. Let's say the other, the other way would be to contact any group organization leader. Could be a club, could be church, could be whatever is an organization leader. They, they, in the code has to basically treat churches on a par or no more hardly. So we have to be very even-handedly on how you deal with the faith community. But that's, the comment is still valid. If you want to reach people, get to the organizations that they're a part of, and that's a way to get the notice out. So, yes? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, she had a follow-up question. I'm thinking churches are business Yeah, okay. Well, what we're doing, but just that's a good comment, but what we're doing, for example, we aren't contacting every, we haven't contacted or proposed to contact every business owner in Lake Havasu City. We contact the organizations that they are a part of and count on them to help do it. It's, to be honest, I, I, I hear loud and clear your desire to get as much outreach as possible. It costs money, and, and so you try to use the most efficient way to get it out as possible. But you're just pointing out that that's another group of organizations that you could get it out to, and we should treat them fine. You know, maybe there's a council or an ecumenical minister area where they, where they meet or where they... My dad was a pastor, full disclosure. You know, he was part of groups of pastors who met, and you could get the word out that way too. So, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, we talked to the Chamber of Commerce. We've talked to the Visitors and Convention Bureau. Are there other groups that you'd like? We, I can give you, we, it's public information. The PED, the Main Street Association. Um, okay, right. Sir, you've had your hand up for a while. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm going to kind of switch it here. Okay. Our role the last update. Of the general plan? Yeah. I've tried to. No, yes, I've read it. I have, no, I've read it, yeah. Have you formed an opinion on it? Because it, the, the, the last update was so, how can I put it nicely? Fouled up, <laughs> in, my, in, in my estimation, because it, it broached areas. Yeah. And we took away from, uh, should we say, single family and brought in mm -hmm. commercial. You've seen it, you've seen the map. Yeah. Are you ever, are you? Collectively, are you planning on maybe changing that? And I don't know how you can change it now because we have 
single residence next to a commercial. They got R1 next to C2. I mean, you know. Well. You got, you've got a single residence against a, a rental, yeah. a duplex. Yeah. You know. Let me mention that. I, Yes, we saw it when you drove around. We've seen it on your zoning map. Uh, every every city has some of those problems because every every district has to end up next to some other district some somewhere. So, the way we generally do this, the short answer is, we try to have the the general plan set the vision. Then you try to align the development code with the general plan. We try to do that without looking at a particular map or the corner of a coma and smoke tree or whatever. We, my point is you need to get the, 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 the structure, the understandability, the tools that will get you the future you want. Then you look at it and say, OK, if these are the districts, the revised districts that we need to carry out our vision, how would the map need to change in order? So it can be done. Uh, it's usually done by city council. I'm sure some of you would like it done by a vote. But the point is you can, but you don't want to have that happen. Let me just say this. You don't want to have a discussion on the development code text and drawings as to what the rules are in Lake Havasu City happen at the same time people are staring at a map. Or they're not going to think about what's good for Lake Havasu City. They're going to think about the corner of you know, this corner or that corner or my property or his property or that person over there who has junk in their yard. And you're not going to get people thinking about it. So you do it in two stages. You do the text, and then you look at it and say, if we do we need to change the lines on the map because this should no longer abut against that? There ought to be some sort of a buffer zone in between, something like that. So so the short answer is, it can be done. The The longer answer is, it's, it's the last thing you do because you really want to pull people's best thinking out about what the overall tools of the city are and how they should be structured. So. We used to have buffer zones. Yep. Well, you still do, but they've been, no, they've been eroded. Well, you can change it, but your comment, the question is, can, is it hard to change it now because you have so few lots left? Yes, you can change it now. The hard part is, is it going to affect very much? Because there's, uh, it'll affect the vacant lots. And frankly, zoning, 80% of what goes on in most cities, maybe slightly less, in Lake, is redevelopment. It's not fresh land development. I mean, it's true that you don't have a lot of vacant land left. But zoning codes are written so that when something becomes obsolete and it's torn down, what replaces it? So you generally draft that. You never say, oh, the, the horse is out of the barn, no use changing the rule now. If that's the rule you need to change, you change it. But everybody should, let me, let me do a 30 second on non-conforming things. If you were legal when you built your building or started your business or started your use, if you were legal, you have a right to continue that as long as you want and lease it to somebody else or sell it to somebody else and invest and repair it. You can keep going forever. But when somebody, the third guy who bought it down from you on the line says, this is obsolete, this business or this structure doesn't work for me, now you're going to have to come into, com into compliance with the code. So the short answer is, is it too late? No, it's not too late. You set the rules for what you want to happen over the next 20 years, knowing that there are only a few vacant lots, but properties will be redeveloped. And as they're redeveloped, they will need to follow that pattern. Yeah, but the, the, what I'm saying is the development code. Everything yeah, else yeah. is over here, but the okay. development code. Yeah. So that's not really part of your, or really would be a big deal for you guys, because if you're not going to look at a map, well, we're going to look, we're going to draft the tools. We look at the map to figure out where the problems are. But we don't recommend a new map. We say, like, the buffer zones. The buffer zones have gone away. Cities often don't use buffer zones anymore. They say, OK, no matter which zone you're in. Wait a minute. It's nice when you're sitting in your apartment five or 10 blocks away from a dad gum. <clears throat> and I, I don't want to bring up the controversy, folks. A bar has got. Yep. Sound coming yeah, out, yeah, yeah, and yeah. you can't sleep until three o'clock. But you've misunderstood. That's why the buffer zones were, were good. You've misunderstood me. People absolutely want to buffer from the noise and the light and the traffic of commercial uses. You had buffer zones, and it may be that we recommend them coming back. But most places find other ways to buffer without putting in buffer zones. They come in extra landscaping. They come in site layouts. They come in noise reduction or, or bans on amplification. Well, guys, let me do my job. It may be that buffer zones are the way to go. I don't, standing here tonight, 
I feel a little funny recommending that you go back to a tool that most cities in America are going away from and they came up with a different tool that says we think this is a more efficient way to protect people from what's going on nearby. So that's our job is to recommend something. Can you put in your report artificial buffer zones? <laughs> Either real or virtual buffer zones. That should be on. You want, but I, I'm hearing you. You want, you want buffering. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. And I'll come back to you, sir, in a minute. Yeah, go ahead. I think we're pretty well obligated to. Go ahead. Okay. Now, you stated your position is you're hired, you're doing this job. Yes. Okay. And that you're going to take all these comments and you're going to take them in this little, take them out of that big box and put them in a box and hand it to maybe these people. I don't know who's in between and say, you have the authority to say, well, we're not going to put that in the code. And they're going to say, oh, yes, we are. Mm -hmm. You said we could come to the conclusion that we won't put it in the code. That's right. So how who's we? Is it you because you're the boss? I, I think... Well, I've get, I'll, I gave you the answer, and I'll give it to you again. I don't think you agree with the answer. The, here's, the, here's the process. You give your input, goes to him, he gives it to me. I give it back to him based on my judgment as to whether or not that is that will work or that is enforceable or that is a wise process. He may say, I, he, I may say, this works. He may say, Don, I wanted your opinion on it, but, but we're not going to do that. And this is just the process. Guys, I've got to be clear here. You're seeing conspiracies, and I, and I and I'm trying to disabuse you of them. You have a planning department. They're trained in planning. They put their thought. They send it to us. We put our brains together. We give them a recommendation. They put their brains together. That's what the city pays them to do. And then it goes to the Planning and Zoning Commission, and they put their brains on it. And they say, yes, no, yes, no, looks pretty good. I, once again, I, I, I don't mean to sound arrogant. If we do our job well, then along the way, people disagree with what we're doing, but they generally, but they don't say, we don't disagree with the whole thing. They disagree with this part of it, or this part of it, or this part. And if they're really concerned, they say, wow, uh, in the draft it was here, now we're going to council and it's out. I'm gonna show up at councilor, or the Planning and Zoning Commission and say, I totally disagree with the fact that it came out. It ought to go back in. And plan Planning Commission can put it back in, so. Okay. We're yeah. this chair is killing me. Are we, going to, are we going to vote on the general plan? Yes. The, the state law requires the that the residents ratify the general plan. Yes. I want to be very clear, though. There was a there was a state mandated public vote on the general plan update, which you will do. I heard a separate comment here, which is that people, several people in this audience, feel very strongly there should be a vote on the development code update, and I will pass that along. I just want to be clear. I don't want anybody to be confused. Vote on the plan update, yes. Vote on the code update, not the plan currently, but we heard your desire to have that happen. So. No, no, no. If, if what you'd have is what you have now. You'd have a new plan with a code that doesn't take you there. So, okay. Anything else that hasn't been raised? I will, I'll stay around for a few minutes if people are ready to go home. Um, please, we, we, we beg you. We urge you, we beg you, even if it's premature, even you came to say X and it didn't seem right tonight, but you don't want to forget the thought, send it in to Stu. Stu will forward it on to us. We keep running files of the things that people want us to change. When we get to, to re re recommend the restructuring, we try to fit that stuff in it. Stu, Stu, I'm sorry, Stu is at the back. So, well, uh, we have his email up here. Let's, got to click it. There it is. His email is, is here. Schmeling, S C H M E L I N G S at L C L H C A Z dot I'm sorry. Oh, repeat the email. Okay, it is Schmeling S S C H M E L I N G S at L H C A Z dot gov. And please get on this website, which is www lhcaz.gov backslash general plan because that's where we're going to post things that come out of this process all the way along all, along the, the way so please do it is it's a big job it is a big job but uh, we as I said earlier we 
We don't believe in meetings just to have meetings. We count on people responding, and then we count on our ability to bring you a, pr a proposed change and have you react to the proposed change. And that's how the process is going to go. And, so. and also on that same website, you'll see a button for council meetings where they archive all the council meetings, video record all the council meetings. The work session of March 11th is the one that I did on, on code enforcement. You might want to uh, review that as well. Okay, thank you. We, we worry more when you don't come in than when you do. When you do come in, we know you're reading stuff and getting us your thoughts. So, yes, sir. That was for the, the development code update. The development code, the zoning and the land use controls, the law is separate. That goes to a vote of city council, although I, the general plan update goes to a vote of the people. And are, that's just Arizona law right now, and we've, we've heard the, the desire for a different outcome. So, All right, thank you all for, oh yes, you got another question. We'll stay, yeah. Yes, yes, calendar is in a handout that's on the website, but just to, to I, I heard your question, but I just want to point out, there is, there is, there's a public meeting here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and a couple of public hearings. That's the plan right now. Um, that is driven by the budget and the times that we can be down here. We think it is enough. Um, the, your question again was, I'm sorry, are they going to, oh. What we have told the what we have told staff is once we have a schedule for coming down here and presenting things. When we're here, we're happy to meet with anybody. We're happy to meet with citizens groups, with faith-based groups, with anybody who wants to meet. But there'll always be a meeting like this at the end of one of the nights just for general public. So if you want us, well, no, I, no, I'm. Oh, usually it's one. Yeah, but if if you'd like to have one during the day, usually our experience is. Uh, we don't get good turnout of the citizens during the day, but if you'd like to have us do that, then we can consider it. That's fine. Well, I'm thinking if there is a certain percentage of the yeah, yeah. 52,000, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right, right. Are you yeah. voting on percentage of that? <laughs> well, the, the answer to your question is no, we don't have a, a, tr a trigger. I'll, I'll say this and, and, and uh, I'll just say it. Even though we, the consultants, devote our careers to this, and so do the staff, and I devote myself to this little funny part of it called zoning codes, most of the world doesn't think it's very interesting. So the, be the best, despite the best efforts we do, we will get the highest turnout we can, but we don't have a trigger that says unless we get 10% of people to nod, we don't consider it valid. To be honest, that's why you have elected government. You take it through and you, sh you tell the planning commission this came out of Here's what the feedback was. Usually there's somebody at the Planning Commission or City Council asking how many people attended the meetings. Did you get good turnout? Is this, what they usually ask me is, Don, is this about as good as you get other places or is it better or is it worse? They don't have a number in mind. And usually they say, we didn't get as many people at the meetings as we, as we, uh, as we uh, hoped for. And they ask me, is, is this more or less than average? And I tell them. And the, usually the answer is, Despite our best efforts, a lot of people do not think this is worth taking eight or nine evenings out of, their, out of their lives to go do. So we do the best we can, and then we divulge that information. And if people think that's not enough turnout to create a valid way to move forward, then, that, then the Planning Commission considers that, City Council considers that. But, you know, there's, there's a lot of things in life where you don't get the turnout that you expected, and, and life must go on. So, I'm sorry, yeah. On the general plan update, we often do more targeted meetings. We were talking with Stu earlier. We'll probably try to set up a work session with ASU students. We'll try to go to the high school. So if there are other groups that you think, you know, we'll go to a senior center and set up in the afternoon. So we are open to other suggestions. Sometimes 
breakfast meetings, a, you know, a business group, we're happy to do any of those things. But as Don said, we typically will always have this, you know, a lot of people can't come during the day. So um, if there are specific groups um, you're aware of offhand and you have a contact, you know, email address for those folks, let us know um, and we'll try to get those set up. But I think primarily on the plan side of things, that's where people really want to roll up their sleeves, look at maps and get into some of the, the details. Um, as Don said, it's hard to get people excited about well, and let me mention this, although there have been, I think uh, this gentleman here mentioned, isn't it a little confusing to be doing these at the same time? Mm, I can understand how it might be, but the good news is if, if people show up at a meeting that is to talk about the plan and they have an idea for a development code, she's going to pass it on to me. If people show up at meetings on the development code and it really is something that relates to the vision and the future of the city, I pass it on to her. So part of what we're doing, the, the advantage you get about having them the same part is you don't have to say, hey, uh, that's really a comment on the development code. We'll start that in 2015. You don't have to say, hold on to your thought for a year while we finish this job and do that job. We're just going to share things back and forth, so we try to get them into whichever part of it is more appropriate. And the last thing I'll say is, um, in terms of notices going forward, you know, we've got the schedule up there. There's a lot of stuff going on. We will be very clear about what's going to happen at each of those meetings. As we've talked about tonight, this is a kickoff meeting. But going forward, we've got a pretty specific agenda for each of those meetings about what we want to get out of it, what you can expect um, when you come to that meeting, what the format will be on the plan side. So we'll try to be as clear as possible so that you can kind of pick and choose which meetings that you want to attend or not um, to keep you abreast of it that way. Website address. The question was a website address, and again, is are you on the the project website? Okay, www. Oh, sorry, that's it. We're all. Okay. Yes. Oh, you had. Okay. Sure. I think we had planned to do that. Okay. 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 Facebook calendar events. Other suggestions on that? I mean, the good news is Facebook makes it cheap, right? You know, it's not doesn't cost much to put the the notices out, though. I hear people nodding. So, groups you want to meet with, ideas of what you want changed or not changed, suggestions about the process, uh, anything related to this, please send them on, and we'll roll them into the process. Thank you for being here and taking your evening away from us. So, we we'll look forward to seeing you again. Thanks. Thank you.